Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Red Delta Project podcast, your resource for simple and efficient diet and exercise tips to not only enhance your health and fitness, but to ensure that your fitness habits enhance your quality of life rather than compromise it. My name is Matt Schifferly, author of books like Smart Body Weight Training, inventor, and of course, founder of the Red Delta Project and your host for today's podcast. Today, we're talking about my unique take and style of calisthenics training. At this point in my training career, I look at the way a lot of people approach calisthenics and I have to admit, you know what, I'm not doing this the same way that a lot of other people do it. And that's kind of actually a good thing because when I started this whole calisthenics journey over 10 years ago, you'd mention bodyweight training to people and there was like one major way that you did bodyweight training. It's usually light, fairly easy exercises, high repetition circuit style training that really didn't do a whole lot for a lot of people. But these days, calisthenics training has become so developed and there's a lot of different approaches to it out there. And this is great because now people are understanding that you can take bodyweight training and adjust it, modify it, and program it towards whatever goal you want. Now, for me personally, I've always kind of been more on the side of things that I want to do my training with the emphasis on I want to build strength and I want to build muscle. That's always been my thing. Back before I did bodyweight training, I was always more drawn towards the bodybuilding, powerlifting style of weightlifting. Like I wasn't doing a whole lot of Olympic lifting or anything fast and explosive. I've always wanted to just grab something heavy and make my muscles scream bloody murder for a few hard repetitions. That was always my style. So when I got into bodyweight training uh, and I got exposed to things like convict conditioning, I took the same approach to calisthenics to a large degree. And over the years, that approach has developed into a little bit of a different, unique take on things. And this is what I've come to call grind style calisthenics. So let's talk a little bit about this because I want to expose you to some of these ideas because when it comes to having a lot of options, particularly with bodyweight training, it's important to recognize what kind of aligns with your goals and preferences so you can train in the most effective way for you. And so maybe if I talk about what I prefer to do, it gives you a little bit of a clue on what you do or do not like so you can move your training to be more effective for your goals. So what is grind style calisthenics? Well, possibly one of the biggest characteristics about grind style is that it has an emphasis on heavy and consistent muscle tension. So a lot of the types of training that you see with calisthenics, especially these days, is very athletic in nature. You see people doing amazing things on bars and uh, the apparatuses, calisthenic competitions, people are flipping and spinning and twirling. Very impressive. Unbelievably cool. But that's not grind style. That was just never my thing. Like a lot of people say, Matt, what do I do about muscle ups? Can you teach me to do muscle ups? And the reality is I don't really have a lot of interest in muscle ups. I do them very rarely and I practice them very rarely. And it's just, they've never really appealed to me. And one of the biggest reasons is because they change where the tension emphasis is in the body and they use, to a large degree, some degree of momentum. I've seen some people who can do very slow grind style muscle ups where there's no momentum, which is unbelievably impressive. But for the most part, they use momentum. They change where the tension is in the body to some degree. And because of that, that was just never my bag. I would much rather say I'm going to do a set of pull-ups and then a set of bar dips, but not do the type of muscle up. So that's probably one of the biggest things that is characteristic of grind style is you take an exercise, fairly basic, nothing too fancy. In fact, it's probably not terribly exciting, like basic push-ups, dips, pull-ups, lunges, and squat variations. And you do them in such a way that there's minimal explosive momentum or power and you're grinding through the reps. You have tension throughout the entire muscle chain, and that tension stays pretty consistent throughout. It's not really high and then really low. There's not momentum being generated. You're not doing a repetition in a certain direction, and then you're changing direction, and suddenly different muscles are working or anything. 
It's like powerlifting. It's like bodybuilding type movements on a weight machine. It's consistent, hard, smooth muscle tension being applied to the muscle. And in my opinion, that's one of the best ways that you can use to emphasize building raw strength and muscle, which is pretty much about 90% of what I've always been after with my strength training. I want to build strength, want to build muscle. All the other stuff, that's nice, but it's not quite my bag. So using techniques and methods that employ consistent tension through the muscles is the first characteristic. Second characteristic is using somewhat of a bodybuilding and powerlifting style programming methods. And this goes right again to the type of repetition structure. It's not about doing uh, like a set of uh, like a a push-up and then a pull-up and you're doing like burpee pull-ups and things like that. Not at all. This is like you take an exercise, you do a hard work set of like, let's say five to 10 reps usually, and then you move to the next exercise, or you do it in the classic bodybuilding style where you're just doing one exercise and that's your one thing. You do a set and then you rest and then you do a set and then you rest. So whatever you would do with the classic weightlifting for bodybuilding or powerlifting, you do the same exact thing with the calisthenics training. Not really any that different. You can superset, you can create circuits, but it's not an emphasis on creating this metcons or anything. It's about grinding out hard muscle burning repetitions. Same sort of programming long term also applies. Things like periodization can work very well. So you have like a strength cycle, then you would have a a hypertrophy cycle, maybe a bit more of an endurance cycle that you can use in like a few blocks, like a block could be a single workout, blocks could be multiple workouts, or maybe even a month or two. It depends on how you set up a periodization scheme for what Uh, individual and your resources and if you're an athlete but for the most part you use the same programming methods in general I guess I've kind of made the point but you're treating your body the same way you would in bodybuilding or powerlifting it's the same exact thing the only difference is the tool that you're using that's the only real difference is you're using your body weight and calisthenics training instead of a barbell or dumbbell that's pretty much about it Now, the third characteristic of grind style calisthenics is one of the biggest differences, though, of course, to using free weights or weight machines. And that is how you adjust the resistance of the technique. Now, grind style recognizes that there are three different variables that are often bunched together as being the same thing. There's weight, there's resistance, and then there's muscle tension. And a lot of times people will look at all three and say like, well, yeah, they're kind of basically the same thing. Like weight is resistance and resistance is how hard your muscles are working, right? If like you have more weight on a bar, then that's more resistance, obviously. And then if you have more resistance, then you have more tension. Like it's one and the same, isn't it? And the reality is no, it's not. Because weight isn't resistance and resistance isn't tension. They're very heavily correlated to each other. But recognizing the division and difference between all three gives you the power to get, to allow you to do grind style in the same method you would for bodybuilding or powerlifting. And probably the best way to illustrate this is think of like a dumbbell. Take a 10-pound dumbbell, right? So the weight of the dumbbell is fixed. You have a given amount of weight. That's the amount of exertion that's putting the mass, it's the force it's giving you against the pull of Earth's gravity, 10 pounds. Now, weight and resistance are not always exactly the same thing. So if you take that dumbbell and you hold it out to the side at arm's length, that's giving you a given amount of resistance against the muscles in your arm and your shoulder. Okay, So that's 10 pounds of weight and it's a certain amount of resistance, however you would quantify that in your muscle. If you bend your arm 90 degrees so that the weight is closer to your torso, like your fist is facing in front of you, now you're using the same weight, but the resistance on your shoulder is now different due to a technical adjustment. You didn't change the weight, but you did change the resistance. So you can see here how weight and resistance are different. Another big example that you often see in the gym is using like a leg press, on a 45 degree angle 
versus doing like a barbell squat. Now with a barbell squat, you're moving the weight directly straight up and down against gravity for the most part. But when you're on that 45 degree leg press, the same uh, amount of weight, let's say two 45 pound plates, isn't going to generate the same amount of resistance because it's on a 45 degree angle. Its relationship to gravity has changed. So there is a difference between weight and resistance. And then there, again, is difference between resistance and muscle tension. Because resistance is an amount of force against your body. But the tension in your muscles to handle that resistance is controlled by your brain. So back to your dumbbell analogy, right? I've seen guys where they lift their arm out to the side and their body tilts if they're doing like one hand dumbbell. Their body tilts and they're swaying a little bit and their shoulders are elevating and they're using, resi they're using the tension in their muscles in a different way than if they did it terribly strict where they're like standing stock still, their feet are together, their back is tight, they're tensing up their lats, they're tensing up their arm, and they're raising it up in a smooth, controlled motion. So it's the same exercise, same weight, same resistance, but the tension, completely different because of their technical adjustment within. This is what I'm always saying, that 90% of progression and, and actual workload is actually invisible. You can see someone doing a one-arm push-up, someone else doing a one-arm push-up, and they look fairly identical, but what's actually going on within and how they're using muscle tension could be miles apart in difference. Very, very, very different. So recognizing these three things as being very heavily correlated, yet not the same thing. That weight influences resistance. Resistance influences tension. But ultimately, your goal to build muscle and strength boils down to tension. Muscle tension is the active ingredient in your workouts. I talk about this in my book, Smart Body Weight Training. The purpose of every workout you ever do for any purpose should be about how are you using muscle tension. And using things like resistance or weight is an influence to that, but it shouldn't be the goal in and of itself. Obviously, it may be the goal if that is the purpose behind your training. If you came to me and said, I want to be able to deadlift 500 pounds, then yes, the weight is the goal. But beyond something like that, where you're saying, I need to be able to do a certain number of weight or something, the resistance and the weight is just the tool. It's not the goal in and of itself. The muscle tension itself is the goal. And that's a completely different approach that's essential for grind style calisthenics compared to a lot of other types of calisthenics training where the goal is to do an exercise or to do a particular trick or technique. Uh, a lot of times you hear this where people will say things like, oh, my goal is to do a one-arm push-up. Okay, well, there's a lot of people out there doing one-arm push-ups, but they're compromising, or not compromising, but they're using a, quote, easy technique. They're using their muscle tension in an efficient way. They're trying to make it as easy as possible for their body to be able to accomplish that goal of doing a one-arm push-up, which is exactly what you should be doing if the goal is the one-arm push-up. But grind style calisthenics takes exactly the opposite approach. With grind style, your goal is the tension. Your goal is to flood the muscle with as much tension as you possibly can for repetitions for whatever programming you have. But if your goal is five repetitions then you want to flood it with enough tension so you do five reps, not enough that you're doing like, I could do 20 of these, but I'm going to stop at five. You want to really make that muscle working hard. And how you do this is recognizing that tension, resistance, and weight are different. So you use your weight. Nine times out of 10, you have your own body weight, and that's not really changing very much. But the resistance is altered through your technique. And that's one of the biggest things, of course, of progressive calisthenics is in weightlifting, your technique stays relatively the same and you adjust the resistance by adjusting your weight. With calisthenics, progressive calisthenics, your weight stays roughly the same, but you adjust the resistance through your technique. And in either case, you're still focusing on your use of muscle tension anyway. 
But that's one of the things to recognize about calisthenics as a whole, but especially grind style, is if you want to get bigger and stronger, you have to stop doing your exercises the easy way. That's kind of my little inside joke and stuff where people tell me like, you can't get bigger or stronger with calisthenics training. And I'm like, well, I don't do it that way. And they kind of look at me like, what do you mean? What way? I'm like, whatever way you're thinking I'm doing it. Like, however you think I do pushups, however you think I do pull-ups, because I can tell you right now, I don't do my pull-ups that way. Because however you do push-ups, if you're not getting stronger with it, you're doing it, quote, an easier technique than what I would be using. And how I would do it would be much more difficult. And a lot of this comes down to being such a technician with exercise that you really hone in some of the technical details and you look for resistance. You actually go after it and hunt it down. When the goal is to do an advanced technique or the goal is to lift more weight or something, your mind actually takes the opposite approach because it's looking for efficiencies. It's looking for shortcuts neurologically to say, how can I move my body as efficiently as possible to make it easier to do a one-arm pull-up or to do a, a one-arm push-up or something along that line? But when your brain goes in the completely opposite direction, like with grind-style calisthenics, and you're like, I want to make this as hard as humanly possible. I want to make it so that I can barely get five reps of push-ups. Then you go the opposite direction and say, let me tweak all these little things. You add tension in your whole body to make it nice and stiff. You keep your shoulders back. Your elbows are in. One of the biggest uh, technical adjustments that a lot of people with grind style work is we use the center line a lot. Almost everything is close. Close push-ups, close pull-ups. A good example of this is uh, the Hannibal for King calisthenics guy on YouTube. Go check him out. Like you watch him and the vast majority of what he does is everything is like close. He'll do a lever and his hands are close together. Pull-ups, close together. Muscle-ups, close together. Everything is very close together. Why? Because it's harder. It's a much harder harder technique. It requires a lot more tension in the muscles in order to do that type of exercise. So the basically, I guess a, a long way of saying it, but one of the biggest characteristics of grind style calisthenics is we do things the hard way. We're not after weight. We're not after reps. We're not even after a, a technical milestone like to saying, oh, I got my first one-arm push-up. If anything, we're running away from that sort of thing. I want to make my close push-ups so effing hard that I might get to the one-arm push-up in the next five to 10 years. I don't want to accomplish this very quickly. And one of the reasons why I noticed that I have a very different style is people sometimes they've wrote me letters and uh, comments on YouTube saying like, how are you training all these years? Like I've been doing calisthenics for 10 years. How can you train for 10 years and you still don't have a one-arm push-up? And it's like, well, if I'm lucky, I still won't have another, a one-arm push-up in another 10 years. And it's not because I'm trying to make myself weak or anything. It's because I'm trying to get things like close arm push-ups and archer push-ups to be as humanly difficult as possible possible. And I'm only going to go after higher level techniques if I absolutely have to as a last resort. If I was a weightlifter, I'd be doing the same thing. Sometimes people have asked me things like, look at this big bodybuilder and look at these guys. Like they're huge. They're jacked. They're so strong, but they're like curling 10 pound dumbbells. Like what's up with that? They're taking the same approach. They're saying, I'm going to squeeze as much effort and resistance and tension out of this 10 pounds as I possibly can. I'm not, I'm actually going to resist adding weight to the bar because I'm going to add some sort of technical adjustment to make it harder. I'm going to go with bigger range. I'm going to have a closer grip. I'm going to tense up all the muscles in unison. I'm going to do everything I can to make this weight heavier and to provide more resistance on a technical level. And I'll add weight but only as a last resort. It's a completely different mental paradigm, completely different approach to things. But I really feel like there's a lot of value in it because one, it's a heck of a lot safer. When you're adjusting your resistance through technical means and you're not going after big numbers, 
it's a lot easier on your joints. It's a lot easier on your nervous system, your mind and body, but your muscles are still screaming bloody murder every set. So they're still getting the stimulus they need. Two is it helps with the ego thing. You're not chasing after these ego trips where you're like, oh, I got to get this because oftentimes people get stuck with that. They'll get stuck at a certain weight or they'll get stuck with a certain technique like a level in convict conditioning and they'll say, all right, I'm still trying to get better, but they need to address some of those little technical issues that are holding them back, but they can't do that until they make their technique easier or they go lighter on weight. This is one of the reasons why a lot of guys, you'll hear things, stories about guys saying, I finally started building muscle once I started to lift lighter. It's because going lighter gave them the ability to adjust things on a technical level, start doing things, quote unquote, the hard way, and it got easier on the joints, easier on the nervous system, they recovered faster, but their muscles got a lot better stimulus for change. It's like that classic uh, bodybuilder from the 80s, Lee Haney always said, stimulate, don't annihilate. And grind style, as badass and hardcore as that name implies, it actually means Take it as easy as possible on your body as you can as far as your joints and your nervous system goes by making the muscle work as hard but save everything else. So it also has a much longer uh, ability, uh, sustainability, I guess you could say. You're not going to ha- increase your chances of being one of these guys that's sitting at a bar when you're in your 50s saying, yeah, I used to be strong and I used to be able to do X, Y, and Z, but that type of training beat me up and now I'm all worn out and my knees hurt all, all day. No, it's actually the opposite. Or you're going to be 75 years old kicking butt skiing down double black diamonds and still doing pistol squats because you're doing things, quote unquote, the hard way that's saving your nervous system and your joints and everything, but it's still making your muscles work very hard. Uh, What are some other characteristics of grind style? Grind style also recognizes the incredible importance of technical proficiency in your training. And for this, we recognize also the importance of daily practice. Because calisthenics requires a lot of different elements. You need more than just strength. You need stability, you need tension control, and you need mobility as well. And these are things that not aren't developed very well if you're only practicing something once or twice a week, particularly like joint mobility. You're sitting around in a chair all day and in your car, you're not going to have very mobile hips no matter how well you squat twice a week. So recognizing the importance of daily light practice, like daily deep squats, is very important to keeping things stable, tension control very well, because you can only strengthen a muscle to the degree you can engage it. And that's something that is a skill you should work on daily with things that just stand on one leg, flexing muscles lightly throughout the day, that improves things substantially. So daily light practice is a characteristic of grind style calisthenics. And like I said, center line focus, that's usually something else. We also place a large emphasis on being active outside of the calisthenics world itself. Other activities you do like yoga, cycling, martial arts, get out and apply what you're learning from your calisthenics training. Because one of the best ways to know if your calisthenics is working is how well that functional carryover applies to other aspects of athleticism, other sport, other physical activities. It's one of the best ways to know is what you're doing actually working in a practical way. So there you go. My thoughts on grind style calisthenics. I'm going to trademark it. I want a nickel for any time anybody says it sort of thing. But let me know your thoughts, reddeltaproject at gmail.com. If you're curious about it, check out my book, Smart Bodyweight Training on Amazon. Paperback and Kindle versions are available for more of my approach to grind style calisthenics, including chain training, which is a unique way of using muscle tension as well. And as always, thanks everybody for leaving reviews on Apple, Stitcher, and Google Play. Really helps us out. It's good karma because it helps other people discover this podcast as well. I'll talk to you guys next week. Till then, be fit. Live free.